Hello, I'm Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm providing some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literary and cultural studies. In this installment, I'll map the historical and theoretical coordinates of the term culture, and I'll examine some of the ways that culture has functioned as an ideological force in Western modernity. The word culture has had different definitions at different points in history. In most of the ways in which we use the word culture now, however, it's a distinctively modern concept. And the concept of culture has been an essential component of the dominant ideologies of Western modernity for the past 400 years. In his book Keywords, Raymond Williams, who is one of the pioneers of academic cultural studies, traces the definitions of the term culture in modernity. Williams points out that the word culture, derived from the Latin cultura, is initially associated with the tending of crops or animals. There's an echo of this original early meaning in the words agriculture and cultivation. The term culture then extends by analogy and metaphor to other more abstract realms of human experience, but still associated with process, a term used to describe abstract and social processes of formation, preparation, training, building, associated with human beings. Williams identifies three related definitions of the term culture that emerge at different historical moments in modernity. Beginning in the 17th century, culture is used as an abstract term to denote a general process of intellectual, spiritual, and aesthetic development. In this sense of the term, culture means something like civilization as opposed to barbarism. And I would suggest that there is a historical connection between this sense of the term culture and the concept of the aesthetic as developed by 18th century German idealist philosophers Alexander Baumgarten and Immanuel Kant. For the German idealist philosophers, the concept of culture as civilized refinement and sophistication and the related concept of the aesthetic as a shared spontaneous recognition of the sublime were elements of a broader philosophical attempt to understand how human societies could govern themselves in this new world of modernity with the emergence of capitalism, the decline of power of the traditional landed aristocracy, the Protestant Reformation and its promotion of individualism, the decline of the traditional authority of the Catholic Church, and the demise of absolute monarchy based on the theory of the king's divine right to rule. The concepts of culture and the aesthetic offered a framework for theorizing the possibility of political consensus, at least among a significant portion of society, those who held economic power, the bourgeoisie. Williams identifies a significant alteration or addition to this conception of culture as universalized civilization in the thought of the German philosopher Johann Gottfried von Herder in the late 18th century, and it is elaborated throughout the 19th century. In this way of understanding culture, one should not speak of culture in the singular, but rather of cultures in the plural. Herder recognized, that is, and objected to, the colonialist and imperialist implications of the notion of universalized culture. So, Herder's conception of culture can be seen as a precursor of the value-neutral anthropological understanding of culture as a term that refers simply to a particular way of life, whether of a people, a period, a group, or of humanity in general. And finally, arriving very late on the scene, comes the distinctively modernist and familiar understanding of culture as referring specifically to fine art. 
In this definition, culture describes the works and practices of intellectual and especially artistic activity, music, literature, painting, and sculpture, theater, and film. This last definition of culture, associating culture particularly with fine art, is a distinctively late modern development and a characteristic feature of high modernism. Williams mentions, for example, Matthew Arnold's book Culture and Anarchy, published in 1867, as an early instance of this usage. This, it might be said, is the definition that provided the hegemonic framework for literary studies during most of the 20th century. And it is this definition of culture to which cultural studies emerged as a definitive challenge. With that, I'll conclude this webcast. But if you have questions or comments as you're reading about and thinking about this topic, send me an email.